Hi guys, I want to do a quick mini lesson on Learning Objective 9.2. Um, I want to describe a situation in which we have a couple of disks, say. So I have a small disk here, and then another disk, let's say here. And they're connected together by a string. So the string is going to be something like this, and then you attach that string to another little guy, a string, say, and then you apply a force. Now what happens is this force acts to the right and it pulls on these two disks. Let's say they have equal mass. Um, and eventually you wind up over here with the same force, right? This is the force F. And the two disks are now sort of dangling behind on their little bits of string. And let me go ahead and draw the disks back here. One disk could be like this, right? And then the other disk could be, let's see. Okay, the other disk could be like that. And they're kind of stuck together. So maybe they're made of soft material like putty or something. Or they have putty around the rim that's sticky. So... Um, now let's see, where is the center of mass of this guy at the beginning? Well, the center of mass, if all the mass is in the disks, then the center of mass is right there at the beginning. And then where is it at the end? Well, it's right there. So what's the displacement of the center of mass? Let me estimate it here. The change in the position of the center of mass is going to be a vector that goes like this. It literally goes from where the center mass is at the beginning to where the center mass is at the end, but I don't want to obscure the rest of the picture by drawing a vector there. But you can see that uh, this vector, which is going to go, which is going to be called delta r, center of mass. So, and that's clearly the same vector you'd get if you drew a vector from this location to this location, which is the change in the center of mass position. So now the, the main idea of the point particle system is that the change in the translational kinetic energy of the system being uh, <coughs> calculated using a point particle approximation is simply equal to the net force acting on the system irrespective of where the net force is connected physically in space, where is it geometrically located, it's just the net force dotted into the displacement of the center of mass. Okay? So that's an easy way to figure out what the change in translational kinetic energy is going to be. Let's call the distance the center of mass goes, let's just call that distance L in this picture. That's just going to be this total distance here. The force points to the right, and there is only one force, so the net force is just equal to F. So you can see right away, this is just going to be F times L. Understand that that's technically F comma zero comma zero dotted into L comma zero comma zero. <clears throat> and that works out to be F times L. But that's also the change in the translational kinetic energy of the system, which, of course, is one-half mv final squared minus one-half mv initial squared. Now, the other piece of this puzzle is what about the extended system? How much work is actually done, and where does the energy go? To answer that question, I need to move this guy up a little bit. Actually, let's scrunch it. Let's move it up a little bit so we can talk about that. I'll move it over here. And let's discuss the extended system. Now, in the extended system, the force goes a greater distance than... L, you can see the force goes from here to here, so let's call that distance D. Now D is actually going to be greater than L by whatever the little extra bit these string stretch is. I don't know how much that is. In a more detailed diagram we might specify that. <clears throat> but the question is now, how do we evaluate the extended energy principle. In other words, the energy principle applied to the extended system. That says that the change in the energy of the system is equal to the work done on the system by the surroundings. 
course, the only real work done is the force going through a distance d. So that's going to be f comma 0 comma 0 dotted into d comma 0 comma 0, which is just fd, the magnitude of the force times the displacement. <coughs> now, what is the change in the energy? There's only two kinds of energy in the system. There's the translational kinetic energy, and there's the thermal energy. There's no spring, there's no gravitational potential energy, nothing like that. So that's all we have. Now, we already worked out the change in the translational kinetic energy. That's F times L. So I can take that result, plug it in here for the change in the translational kinetic energy, and I get F times L plus the change in the thermal energy is equal to the work done. And that allows me finally to solve for the change in the thermal energy. F times D minus L. So <clears throat> to the degree that D is greater than L, we get excess work done by this uh, surrounding force, and that turns into thermal energy. And that's the basic idea.